With the last day leading up to this historical election, I went out to catch some last minute student voters. Why are you voting so last minute? Well, uh, I just woke up a little late today and I had to come up from downtown. So, you know, just on my way to class, figured I'd get it, get it over with before. Yeah, it's too late. Better late than never, that's what I always say. So Adam, how important is, vo is voting to you? Uh, voting is very important to me. This is a very historic election. It's actually my first presidential election that I've been able to vote in. And there's a lot of controversial issues on the ballot now. So it's really important for, you know, students, like people our age to like get out there and put their voice in because, you know, if you don't vote, then, you know, you're not getting your, your voice heard. I'd say that this is the most important um, election I've ever voted in. I feel like the vote this time, I want every single young person to get out there and vote because I think that this election, more than any election I can, in my memory, the, the vote of the young person is critical. What do you think is so important about voting? Well, we live in a representative democracy, you know? This is like where our power comes from. It comes from the vote. People like sit and say, oh, well, people aren't really listening to us. They'll listen to you if you vote. They have these opinions, and their opinions matter. The way to voice their opinions, the way to get, you know, the government, big brother, whatever, the man, to listen to them is by voting. I think um, I've had the chance to vote before, but I've chose to vote today as well, and I think part of it is the whole experience voting on, you know, November 4th, the election day. So, uh, definitely a huge event. I want a new president, man. Um, yeah, go Obama! <laughs>mom called me and like announced that he won and I like threw my food and was like screaming I like ran to my friend's apartment and I was like running by a classroom in Cowell and they had class and I like ran and I was like Obama won and, like the whole class like stood up because they were all like they couldn't get the news from the classroom. We I joined wanted. in the giant running thing that went on. The mobbing of students. Oh. I don't really know what it was. We started a tradition because <laughs> it's never been done before so it's like no one really knew what they were doing. Like thousands of students just like mobbed all around campus, like all the way to Oaks and like just around everywhere. Like we came from Merrill and we just ran like, like yelling, just put screaming, Obama stickers, people like... were streaking. I think that Barack Obama is a better choice than John McCain. Um, I definitely support his uh, international policies as well as his energy policies. So I'm really happy about it. I'm extremely happy that Obama I'm um, excited. Won. Yeah, I'm Let's excited. See what's gonna happen. He's Not gonna true. make a lot of good changes. We really needed this change, like we really needed like, you know, this, the way like the economy is right now, like it's really bad. And I could see that Obama, he really cares about the people. I think Obama winning the presidency is a huge step in our American history. I think it's a night that I'm going to look back on as one of the most memorable nights of my life. Proposition 4, uh, it did not pass. Were you happy with that, the one about um, abortion for minors? Well, I'm glad it didn't pass because, like, I believe, you know, in pro-choice, you know, people and each individual has a choice, you know, between, you know, whether they want to, you know, have an abortion, you know, a young lady or not. And I don't think it's right to just go get permission from the parents because then they're going to end up making that decision for, for them. This is the third time that that hasn't passed, so hopefully after this they'll just stop trying. Proposition 8 passed. How do you feel about that? Um, I'm very uh, disappointed. I, I can understand um, that people who were for Prop 8 supported it just because that um, the way they saw it through their religion. Uh, Mormons and Christians definitely they feel that um, homosexual relationships aren't a good thing and I feel that uh, Prop 8 passing really violates our rights in the Constitution. Just you know just the freedom that we have. It's really it's a civil rights issue that uh, should be resolved as soon as possible and I feel that everyone has a right to make their own decision. I was I'm kind pissed. Of like Obama may have won but Prop 8 passed. Like someone put that in their window and I was like, what? Thank you, Eugene. Concurrent with Obama's victory in the presidential race was the passing of Proposition 8, which made the election a somewhat bittersweet experience for many Santa Cruz voters. While California passed the Proposition 8 with 52.3% in favor, Santa Cruz County residents voted against it 70% to 29. In response to the passage of Proposition 8, people across the state have gathered in protests. On November 5th, over 2,000 people joined together for a candlelight vigil at San Francisco City Hall.
Rape can be a very devastating and traumatic experience. Knowing how to both prevent rape and deal with the aftermath of rape is essential to every person's safety. Here is reporter Sarah Washington to provide us with some essential information and key resources. Rape is a devastating part of any community, and Santa Cruz is no exception. Having the tools to both protect yourself and prevent it from happening in our community can prove to be invaluable information for everyone. Uh, the reported uh, rate of rape on any campus, and we're no exception, is usually very low. Last year, there were no reported rapes to the campus police. But like every other university, uh, we probably have a far higher rate than the reported numbers indicate. All of the research shows consistently over the last 20 years, 28 years, that on a typical college campus, one in four female students will experience rape or attempted rape. So what actually happens and what gets reported are two very different realities. I'd like to stress that uh, people often make the mistake of uh, viewing rape by somebody you know as sort of, um, to use the words of the researcher David Lisak, rape light, L-I-T-E, as though if you know the person, it's not as serious, it might have been just miscommunication or drinking too much. And the reality is uh, quite different from that. A rape, being raped by somebody you know is as serious, as traumatic, as complicated uh, to recover from as a rape by a stranger. The Rape Prevention Center website outlines some safety tips. Trust your first feeling of uneasiness. If the aggressor is an intimate partner, tell them in a serious tone that you are uncomfortable and want them to stop. Use a strong, serious voice. Look for others to assist you. Believe in your right to your own body. Don't plead, play cute, or apologize. When at parties, you should have a safe way to get home already planned. Never leave a drink unattended and self-defense classes are recommended. The only effective way to prevent rape is to talk to male students. Most men don't rape, but a sizable percentage do. And while it may be difficult to reach those who do, to really re-educate them, turn them around, encourage them to uh, respect women or respect any, all, human, you know, all their fellow students, we certainly can reach those male students who don't rape, but whose silence uh, really allows those who do to just uh, inflict their, their pain on others um, and not be held accountable. Activist groups like Take Back the Night have earned international attention in their efforts to educate and spark dialogue within communities. Here in Santa Cruz, we have the CLIT Collective. CLIT, standing for um, Consensual Liberation Through Intimate Tactics, is a collective of folks who um, came together to discuss and dialogue and generate workshops around sexual violence. And oftentimes there is no dialogue about how issues of racism and classism and um, sexism, patriarchy, capitalism all play into maintaining and upholding sexual violence. Each workshop is kind of like another step building on the workshop previous. Um, getting a little bit more in depth into the many layers of um, sexual violence and the ways that it's used in many forms of oppression. Despite our best efforts of prevention, rape does still occur. When it does occur, whether it happens to yourself or a loved one, it's important to know your resources. And the resources are basically, I'm a resource, I offer rape crisis counseling. Uh, we also have a uh, counselling psychological department that has therapists available uh, on a crisis level during the day and any time during out-of-office hours by calling their central number which is 4592628. Obviously the police department is an option, you have a right to report rape, it is a crime. If you, you can make a police report and you can report it internally on the campus. If you ever find yourself in an emergency situation or ever feel unsafe, feel free to call 911. If you can't get to a phone, these blue light emergency phones are placed all around campus. Just simply open one up,
press the red button inside and you have a direct line to the police department. And while these things help in keeping us safe around Santa Cruz, the best thing we can do for our community is dialogue. For BSN News, I'm Sarah Washington.